Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create rain using the Niagara particle effect system as you can see here. And this is also going to include collision so when you are underneath cover or inside a building or anything like that it's not going to be raining, the rain will actually be stopped by the roof or any cover but you'll see it, it still can flow underneath if the wind is pushing it in as you can see here. So this is what we're going to be creating today and this is also including with minimal FPS drop and I will also be showing you another way to make it much more efficient, especially on larger maps later on in the video. But again, this is what we're we'll going to be going over and creating today. Again, it might look a little bit weird as it's a kind of a bright sunny day in the sky for me. But without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we're going to do is we obviously want to create our actual Niagara system. So we're going to right click, go to effects or FX, and we're going to get the Niagara system right at the very bottom there. This is the one we want. Click it and here we're going to choose a new system from selected emitters. Next and what we're going to do is choose the fountain, a looping fountain spray because this one looks the most similar to rain out of all these so a lot of the work is already done for us, we just need to customize it. So press the green box with the right plus in it there to add it and that's the only one we want to use so we're going to finish that there. Now we have our Niagara system. I'm going to call this rain underscore ns so we know it is our rain for a Niagara system. And we're going to open it up straight away. Now you can obviously name it ns underscore rain for Niagara system rain, but I personally find it easier to search rain instead of ns, but obviously you can come up with your own naming systems there. Now we have this fountain here. Now this is very similar to how I did the snow video, because what we did there was turn this upside down, that's essentially snow. So let's start off by doing that. What I want to do is I want to delete the sphere location and add velocity and cone because I want this to come down in, in a box shape and that's especially useful for what I'm going to show you later on for making it more efficient. So now you see it's just coming down in a line like this which is obviously not what we want. So we need to make this a box instead of a sphere. So we're going to hit the plus on the particle spawn there and we're going to add a box location. The box size you can set to whatever you like and this again is important for what the size of your level is but I'm going to go with 5000 by 5000 on the X and the Y and the Z I'll leave as 100. Again these are the values which I'm using for the more efficient way later on. Then this is obviously falling quite slowly and it looks a bit more like snow because it's slow and the balls. So we want to add another particle spawn, this one with add velocity. Now this is where we can in the Z put minus 500, minus so it flows downwards and 500 just so it's a bit faster. You can again put whatever value in here you like so minus 1000 if you want it to be kind of stormy coming down really heavily or minus 750, whatever it is that you choose. But you'll notice again, there's hardly any here. So if we go up to the spawn rate under emitter update, at the moment it's 90, I'm going to set it to 2500. And you see there's a lot more coming down now. What I like to do is just set the spawn rate to half of whatever the box size is. So my box size is 5000, my spawn rate is 2500. You can obviously choose whatever you like, but that seems to be a good consistent one which I like to use it seems to give me the best results personally. But again, this still looks a lot like snow. So we're gonna change some of the initialized particle systems under the particle spawn. The lifetime mode I'm gonna keep as random and I'm also gonna keep the min and max as 1.4 and 1.75. If you want to have your range starting higher up in the sky, you'll want to increase this so they're not destroyed before they hit the ground. But just keep in mind, the longer you have the lifetime, the more will be spawned in at once, so the laggier it will be or the more demanding it will be on your PC. So again, always keep that in mind. And if you find out it is getting a bit too demanding, you can decrease the lifetime min and max and just lower the rain closer to the floor. And to change them from being balls, what we want to do is change the size. So the sprite size mode at the moment is random uniform, which means they're always gonna be the same kind of size. We want them to vary a bit. So it's not a ball, it's a line. So we're gonna go from random uniform to just non-uniform. So again, they're now varying. To make it a line, we want to make one size bigger than the other, obviously. The X I'm going to put as 3 and the Y I'm going to put as 60, for example, like so. Now again, you can choose whatever values you like in here. I like these just because it makes them really thick and pronounced, uh, but obviously you can choose whatever you want. That's mainly especially useful for a tutorial just to really show it off, but you might want something a bit more subtle, for example, 2 and 50 or 1 and 30, whatever you want really. Just mess about with the values to get them perfect for you. But you'll notice they're now just coming down in random lines so it just looks like we're dropping a load of straws from the sky, not actually rain. So that's very easy to change. So what we're going to do is the rotation. 
So you might think we'll change the sprite rotation mode here. And you can technically do that. You can do a direct angle degrees and then manually set it. However, a much more efficient way of doing it is going down to sprite renderer right at the bottom, changing the alignment mode here from unaligned to velocity aligned. And now you'll notice it is falling in whichever direction the rain should be falling, i.e. the moment our velocity is straight down, so they are going straight down. Now, obviously, you saw at the start of the video as well, we're going kind of sideways, as rain oftentimes does as the wind pushes it. So to do that, you just add the velocity again. So, for example, you can change the Y to 500. And now you see it is doing it like this. You can choose whichever location you want. So you can do X or Y. You can do minus or plus. I am personally doing Y of the positive just because when I add it in the level, it's going to be falling this way, which is how I want because that is based upon the orientation of my map. I think that looks the best. But obviously, again, change this for what looks best for you personally. And so now that is our rain pretty much set up. We don't have the collision yet, but let me just show you what we have at the moment. So we can drag our rain in, raise it up, so this so it's actually going to be falling from the sky. And again, this is where the lifetime comes in, because the higher up it goes, the longer it takes to fall, which means the more will be despawned. But if we just have it here, you'll see we now have rain. However, if we go under cover, it's still going to be falling through here, and actually it will even go through the floor. Again, that's not too much of a worry, but of course it will be more demanding on your PC. But again, the main part is when we're inside or under cover, it's still raining which we obviously do not want. So we'll open it back up again, and all we need to do is just give it some collision. So that'll be under the particle update. So we're gonna add one, and we're just gonna add something called collision. Nice and simple. Now you'll notice we've got some errors. What we're gonna do is just fix issue, and the problem will be solved for us automatically. Now, if we go on to add another particle, this will give us another error, which we will have to manually fix. But if we just get it first, we're gonna generate collision event. Again, we've got some errors. I already know what it is, but just to show you, if we hover over this here, it says two errors, particle spawn error, this stage has compiler errors. It's under the particle update and particle spawn. If we click on particle update, this stage has compiler errors, show the errors in Niagara log. All it says is before the particle's ID parameter can be used, the requires persistent IDs option has to be activated in the emitter properties. So essentially, all we have to do is go to emitter properties and tick requires persistent IDs and that should fix the issue. But a note, this says it comes with additional memory and CPU costs. So the collision side of this might not be too good if, for example, you are on a low end PC or your target audience is a lower end PC. However, in all reality, this should be fine though. But again, I do have other videos going over more basic rain versions. They obviously do not look at as good as this, but they are aimed towards lower end. So it's just using a widget and then just disabling it when you go inside. And to make sure you can still see it outside, we have rain effects on the windows. I will leave a link to those in the description down below. However, again, they don't look as good as this one, but it is aimed for more lower end PCs. But again, this one should still work perfectly fine for you. But once we've added the collision, you'll notice that is halfway there. So now it's no longer going underneath here, but when they collide with anything, they're bouncing. Now rain can sometimes do this. It might sometimes bounce a little bit, but it's definitely not as pronounced as this, and you kind of have to get quite low down to the ground to notice it, so I'm not gonna have it bouncing. What I'm gonna do is just instead destroy it so it's then just gone. It's basically been absorbed into the ground or it's now just floating on the ground. Very simply, what we can do is add another module on the particle update and just kill particles, which is basically a destroy actor or a destroy component. And we don't wanna just tick it because that will then just destroy it immediately. What we want to do is press this little arrow here and search for has collided. So essentially, when this particle has collided, it is going to then despawn, or it's gonna be destroyed. So that should it be now done for us. We can save, close this, and you'll notice now it's not bouncing and it's not going under the cover as we have here. So we have a nice rain system set up. And this looks pretty good if I do this myself. Nice and simple, not too demanding. Again, it looks great. However, at the beginning, I said I'll show you a more efficient version of this or just having this in your level, so especially for a, a larger level, you don't wanna make this absolutely massive. I'm gonna show you that now. So we don't need to change anything. All we're gonna do is just delete this from our level and then open up our character blueprint. And what we're gonna do is basically just have the rain follow the character. So the character isn't going into where the rain is, the rain is just always above the character. So we'll go to the viewport, add a component, add a Niagara particle system. I'm gonna name this to be rain and we'll change it to be our rain NS system we have here. 
Again, I'm just going to raise this up a bit, as you can see here. And now this is why I decided to have it, this box size here, because in my testing I found that this size was the perfect size for the player. It's far enough away that the player thinks it's just going off in the distance, it's not too close that they can see it, and the same with the height. If you have it around 750 I think I found was good for this kind of size and the lifetime which I had on there. So we'll compile, save, close this, hit play and we'll have a look at what this looks like. So you see the rain is now on us, it's following the player. Now obviously as the player turns that is also rotating the rain, however you might like that effect as well as obviously that's kind of giving a bit of a wind effect, the rain's changing direction, but as the player's moving the particles won't move with them as they are already falling, so this looks quite good and again if you go under cover you can't see them there. You will obviously be able to make it so this doesn't rotate with the player if you wanted, and I can go over that in more detail with some of you if you wanted as well, but I won't do it at the moment. So again, this is a much more efficient way, so if you have a massive map, you don't need to have the rain cover the whole map, you just need it wherever the player is, like this. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up this rain system, which we have some nice rain and Niagara particle effect systems falling down from the sky, as you can see here. Very similar to my snow one, however it does look slightly different for rain, obviously. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.